Hello everybody, this is Albany Supreme here with another video of Turing. Now this time I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a live video of me making Pong and explaining some things during the way. So uh, it might be a little bit uh, boring at some parts because I'm not going to be talking that much. But I'm going to try and make it less boring. So. Without further ado, let's get started. So first we're going to set our variables. Let's set our, our x value, like our coordinate values and our color for the, for the uh, player stick. And actually let's, let's set the computer ones too. So these four are going to be for the player stick and these four are going to be for the computer stick and then I'm going to do these ones that are going to be the ball x's and the ball y's actually I should do this and then since the next x and y values are going to be the radiuses or radii I'm going to initialize them as 10 so let's say the ball is going to be gonna have a radius of 10 pixels always so now let's uh, let's make our procedures for moving Oops. procedure just call it up and then we're gonna have our variables for the, for the stick Then let's do it. So right at right at the beginning, we're gonna we're gonna erase our past our past thing. Let's say it's gonna be the background's gonna be black, which is 255, or you can type black like that. So right off the bat, it's gonna erase it, and then we're going to make an if statement. Uh, if we're gonna make the y two value the the upper value and the y value the bottom value, so we can do this. So since we're going up, we do if y two is greater than or equal to max y, then else then we're gonna add values like that. So this is saying if it if it hits the top of the screen, it's going to do nothing. Otherwise, it'll go up. Then you can draw it back. Like that. And now let's do the exact same thing, but for going down. So we're gonna call it down this time. And we're going to go subtract 2, and it's going to be if y is less than or equal to 0, meaning if it hits the bottom of the screen. So there, now we got that. Now, we're not going to do left or right because, like, we don't need, we don't need to. Now, right off the bat, let's, let's, uh, make a delay. Right off the bat, we'll make a loop, an end loop. This is going to be for the actual gameplay. Speaking of gameplay, I forgot one variable. I'll call it control, which is the array care of boolean, which if you saw like a couple of my other videos that involved moving, moving graphics and something like that, I explain what this means. Right off the bat, it's gonna be like that. Let's un and then we're gonna initialize our values. Let's so x is going to equal let's say twenty. And x two is going to equal forty. Y will equal. I'm gonna make it a, a uh, I'm gonna make it a function. If you will, a round function, so it rounds because it's an integer. So. It'll be max y 
div to you can type div or you can do this but I, I like using div or divided by it's easy for me and the minus 35 and my 2 is going to equal y plus 70 so basically the 6 is going to be 70 pixels tall if you will so that's why I'm subtracting 35 so this is basically half way up the screen this is 35 actually at the beginning I might as well set my view to graphics with view dot set I, I believe I explained that in, in another one of my graphics uh, videos well, let's make it 800 by 700 why not and then title pong position center center now keep in mind center is spelled with re in this case so yeah that's that and then while I'm doing this I might as well do the x3 y3 all those so we're going to do max x minus 40 then x4 is going to equal max of x minus 20 so it's also going to be 20 pixels thick you can do it any other way like you can make this 0 and then make this just equal max x if you want you can do that and you can change this value if you want you can make it you can make it like 50 and then you can make it at 100 to make it 100 thick I just like starting it off in the center because that's me so then C will equal 0 because it's going to be white and we'll draw a background color so we'll go like this and make the background black you don't have to do this I'm gonna do it like you can make it whatever color you want but keep in mind like when you're doing this like the procedure moving up and down it's got to be the same color as the background when you erase otherwise it's not gonna look right and then you can draw your paddles like this do the same thing computer so it's gonna draw all the sticks in the background and then it's gonna wait a second to give the player some time to think and this is where we're gonna do stuff so I'm gonna use input dot key down also explained in one of my in one of my graphics videos and then I believe it was called control was it yeah control and then if control we're gonna use the up arrows so key up arrow then up and then have your variables like that also control and then the same thing for the down arrow I like using the arrows for video games because it just works. It works nice. Okay, so that's that. Now, before this, I'm gonna I'm basically gonna draw these again in the loop. Like that. Now you're probably wondering why do I have this and then in here? Well, these procedures they they um, change they change the values of x and y. So when you're moving, it obviously has to draw. So in fact, I could I could probably get rid of this. So it's gonna have to keep drawing that, but at the beginning. I want to show the player 
like where the sticks are and everything. Now, let's do the computer. I like doing a procedure for the computer. Let's make the, the, the computer just move up and down. I'll just put com. There, x3, y3. So this is, this, this is very simple. I have to make another variable up here. So, we're going to do a direction for the computer, so I'll call it CD for computer direction. You can call it whatever you want. And then over here, we'll make computer direction equal 1. You can use a boolean since there's only going to be two values for it, but I'm going to use an integer. You can do whatever you want. So, like with the up and down procedure, we're going to erase the previous the previous uh, computer stick. I just forgot I have to do CD. There, there we go. So we're going to erase the computer stick, and then and then we're going to do if CD equals zero. I made, no, I made a one. Then, then we're gonna do this like the same thing here, uh, here for this. So we're gonna make we're gonna make CD if it equals one, go up. If it equals two, go down. But this time, uh, I, I gotta make sure I change these so I don't run into glitches. This time we're actually going to have something here. Let's say every time it hits the top of the screen, it's going to go down, and every time it goes hits the bottom of the screen, it goes back up. I'm going to make CD equal two, or you can do this, or like I said before, you can make it a boolean, a boolean variable. And then else if CD equals two, then Let's let's copy this now. So I'm just gonna indent everything here because it's always a good thing to indent. Not just if your teacher for computer science tells you you have to indent. That's not just the only reason. But it also no, I forgot to change that. There we go. But it also makes it a lot easier for editing. So you see, I'm I'm very organized with my programming. That's just how I work. So there. Oh yeah, that's less than. So that should do it. And then. I forgot I have to do a delay, let's say four for now. Then down here we're gonna do the com procedure and our variables what was it? C D there you go. Actually, you know what? We don't even need these anymore. These C variables because we're not drawing them in anymore, so so we can get rid of those. This is an extra little thing. Oops, that, that was wrong. Sorry. So like that, and then we can get rid of that. Also, like I said, with in my procedure videos, your make sure your variables are aligned in the right order. Like that. So far, let's see. What we Variable has no value. Let's explore that. Does x3 have a value? Yes, it does. How about y3? Oh, I forgot to set my y values. That wasn't very smart of me. 
So we'll just make him equal the same thing as as your uh, player stick. So they're gonna they're gonna both be in the center. It's better than repeating this. Okay, so we obviously have some glitches going on. So let's explore what those glitches are. So I'm gonna do it again. So I'm not touching anything. And I didn't press any keys. So you saw after the delay, it started going up and then it didn't go down. And then this, for some reason, started to go down. Probably means I, I did the wrong thing. Exactly what I expected. I forgot to change these. So now let's see what happens. So that's working. Up and down's working now. I have my restrictions. Perfect. Actually, you know what? I'm going to increase the Y value a little bit, like the so it's taller. And I'm gonna make these sticks a lot bigger. So let's make it 200 now. Which means we're gonna do that. So now the sticks are bigger. I'm doing this a lot, it's easier for the computer to actually hit back. Since it's not following the ball. So, so now that's working. Now, here's the most difficult thing you're gonna do. The ball. So, right off the bat, we're gonna have to set our ball X and ball Y. So, we're gonna do, we're basically gonna do the same thing over here. Might as well copy this. Change this to X, and then say minus ball X2, like that, to the radius, in case I want to change it later, because it's already declared up there, so I'm safe to do that. And then ball Y is going to be the exact same thing, but this time... Ball Y2. They go the same thing, but in case you want to make it different, like if you want to make the X radius really skinny and the Y radius really fat or thick, that'll work. Then we're going to have to draw the, the ball. So we'll do that. And then C. So there we go, we got the ball. Okay, so you see that's flickering. Well, we can do view.update. View.update like that. Slows it down, but it fixes that glitch, which means I can use a smaller delay time. You know what, actually? I have a big computer, I have a wide resolution. Let's make it a wide X, like that. There we go. Looks so much better. Okay, so now, this is going to be exciting. We're going to do the ball movement, which means I'm going to need to, I'm going to need more variables. So, these variables are going to be like the X direction and the Y direction. Again, the same thing as uh, the computer direction, you can make the, these booleans if you want. So you know what, I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to make them booleans. I'll do, I'll do XD and then YD equals boolean, which equals true. So I'm going to do that. It's going to be different. Everything's different here. So now, what these are going to do is like, this is going to set, is it going up, is it going down, because, you know, Pong, it'd be, it'd be pretty boring if it was just going straight. And the X, when you hit, when you hit the ball, you want it to turn around. So, you know, more variables. I'm going to do X amount, let's say, actually, let's go X into Y in, like that. Actually, I don't need an X. I'll, I'll put it in anyway. So this is going to be like how far 
it's going to move up or down based on where it hits the stick. I'll show you that later. And the X and how fast it's going to move. In case you want to be mean and make the game more difficult for people, you can do that. So let's set them right off the bat. So YD. Oh yeah, I already set those as true. So we're gonna set our x int. I don't care. We're going to set our x int as uh, let's say two, and then our y int as zero. Since at the beginning it's not gonna start moving up or down yet, so we're gonna set it as zero. Now, oh boy. I'm gonna make sure I have everything. I should be good. All right, let's make the ball move. Procedure. Oh, here's another fun fact. P R O C is short form for procedure. In case you don't want to type the whole word, or if you forget the spelling, just remember P R O C. We're gonna call it ball, and then we have a ball x, ball y. Ball x2, ball y2, and I don't think I'm gonna need my c. And then x int y int equals int, and then here xd yd equals boolean. There we go. So right off the bat, like before, we're gonna have to erase our ball. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna erase it. Here we go. This is exciting. Oh yes, very exciting. So now it is erased. So now, now, now you guys might have different ways of doing this. You might, but this is how I like to do it. So now we're gonna make our if statement. If the ball x is less than or equal to x2. So basically, if it's less than or equal to x2, which is the right side of the of the player stick, then we're gonna go. Oh, here's another thing. If you wanna do this, since it's gonna be less than. So basically, since you're hitting the right side of the of the uh, paddle. You can also do, uh, since you're hitting it on the left side of the ball, you can do ball x minus ball x2 if you want. But for the x, I'll just leave it like this. But for the y, I'm going to do that. So ball y minus ball y, no, be plus. Be plus ball y2. It's greater than or equal to y so basically if the top part of the ball is greater than or equal to the bottom part of the stick which is y oh yes i also need i forgot i need all of the of the uh x and y's for the stick for both sticks so i'm gonna i need that and ball y, I warned you. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be making some mistakes. So right here, it's saying, not and. Actually, it's gonna be or. So basically, it's saying, uh, actually, yes, it would be and. Never mind. So basically, it's saying if the top part of the ball is hitting at least the bottom part of the stick. And or like the same thing, but the top part of the stick and the bottom part of the ball. Then right off the bat, we're gonna make our x d equal false because I'm pretty sure I made it true. Yes, I did. So right off the bat, it's going to equal false, which means it's going to move the other direction, which I'm gonna program later. And now to make it move up and down. You can either do a uh, a function that makes it go it makes it go make the integer 
for the y, like the y int equal a certain value based on exactly where. Or you can make it more simple and less hectic because otherwise you might have the ball moving like like really fast up and down. It's going to be very hard to play. Basically, we're going to make it e equal uh, segments. So I'm going to copy and paste that. So if the top part is greater than or equal to y, and y plus, I kind of I kind of pasted it, but oh well. So it's two hundred. Yeah, it's two hundred. So I'm gonna do fifty. I'm gonna make it quarters, almost. Then yd equals. So let's say false equals down and true equals up. So it's gonna hit the bottom of the paddle. It's gonna go down. So it's gonna equal false. And then the y int, we're gonna make it equal two. So it's gonna move up two. And I can copy and paste this whole thing to save time. And then else it plus 50. So now it's saying, okay, there we go. Now it's saying that. So it's going to be the other part. And then let's make it 90 so that it can hit the center and then not go up at all. So yd is still going to equal false, but the y int is going to equal 1. You can also make it so that if the ball y, like if it equals from from the bottom to halfway up, which would be from y to y plus 100, then it's this, and then do a separate if statement for the int, but I like it this way. Then, I can copy this whole thing, actually. Let's go 90 and then 110. So now we're not going to be changing the directions, and we're going to make this zero, so it doesn't go up or down. And then, yeah, we need two more. Like that, and then 150, 150, and then for here we can just go Y2. We can do that so it's the top part, so it doesn't glitch up if you hit the very like the bottom part of the ball. So now these are going to equal true. Both of these. And then this is going to equal 2. And if. And if. Oh, that's, that's not how you spell if. And then else if ball x is greater than or equal to x3, the left part of the computer stick, then we're going to copy and paste this. This is not very clean, but it's kind of repetitive. You, you could have probably found a way to make it a procedure. So now, we're going to change all the y, y's to y3, and then all the y Four, all the y twos, the y fours, and then one more thing. This is going to equal true because it's going the other way. And and then another another thing is we have to do this ball y plus ball y two. So the top part of the ball is greater than or equal to the top part of the screen we don't want it to fly off screen so what we're going to do is I believe I made false go down so false else if don't use an else statement otherwise it, it'll mess things up just trust me on that one you can you can test it but I'm telling you it'll only lead to failure so now 
that's going to bounce off the screen. Bounce off the edge of the screen. Okay. No, I don't like putting spaces in between. Like that. Now, we're going to do our moving of the left to right. So if XD, since it's a boolean, we don't have to do this. So if XD, then... Because that's also how it works with with this. You don't have to. You don't go if control equals. It's just control, and then the subscript is the up arrow. All right, that's enough of that. So if XD, then yeah, I do. Then all X is going to add. No, it's going to subtract. Correct? Yes, it is. X. In. Yeah. So it's gonna subtract the x in. So it's gonna move to the left. Else, if not xd, then so if xd is false, then it'll add x in. It. Now, like I said, you can. You don't have to make this a variable xn, but it's it's worth it if you want to change it later. You don't have to go into each and then it you don't have to have a mess. And then y d then ball y plus equals because I believe yeah it's going up. So y int. And then else if not y d, then ball y minus equals y. Int. That's also how uh, if it hits the center, it does nothing because if if it's zero, then it's not gonna add anything. So and ball, I think I called a ball, right? Yeah. So that's a pretty big procedure. So that's that's probably about half of the program. <laughs> no, I'm exaggerating. And then, oh boy, I'm just gonna copy this whole list and then write xd and yd later. Xd and yd there. Now another thing. You guys don't have to uh, make these all procedures. You could put them in the main loop, but what do you think is easier? Going if control, okay, and then I have a bunch of code here, or okay, up. Well, there's a glitch when it goes up. Let me check the up procedure. It's, e it's easier to read if you have a procedure. That's another benefit T towards removing repetition. So, without further ado, actually, I actually forgot one thing. Gotta make sure, yeah, I did, I erased it. So now, I got to draw the oval back in. That. Without further ado, let's see if it works. Pretty good. Come on, hit that can be. Yeah, it hit it. Hey, it hit the center. Good job. Okay. This is this is actually fun. I actually like this. Come on, win, win, win. Nah, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna beat this computer. Huh? Why didn't it say you win? And then I just let it go off my side. What the heck? We forgot one little thing. Exit, we need an exit statement. Exit when 
ball x. Let's be nice and make it equal ball x plus ball x just so that the right part, the right side of the ball goes off screen. So less than or equal to zero or ball x minus ball x2. Let's be nice to the computer too. Greater than or equal to max x. Take that. Yeah, like that. And then end loop, and then outside the loop we can do if ball x plus ball x2 is less than or equal to zero, then now keep in mind it has to be less than or equal to because it can still go off screen because if you change your x int value. So it could not equal zero, but it equals negative one. So it's always gotta be less than or equal to. Then but you lose. Else if ball x minus ball x two is greater than or equal to same thing with greater than or equal to you win. Problem? You bet your baby there's a problem. I'm gonna let it beat me. Look at that. Just erases part of the screen. That's not good. And the reason why I deleted the uh, the enemy or the computer stick is because remember it uh, only draws at the beginning of the loop. So we have to set the color the color of the background. I explained this in my uh, moving star program, color back to black. This means the background of the text is gonna be black. And then we're gonna set the color to say 12, which is red. Now, if I lose, it'll say you lose in red. But that but still, we wanna let the player know, hey, you suck, you lost. Come on, what's wrong with you? So we're gonna make a font. Let's call it font. Actually, let's call it text. Equals int, which is gonna equal font dot new, which is new font. And then in brackets, you're gonna type the name of your font times new roman. Then the size of your of your font. Let's say 50. And then is it bold? You bet your baby it's bold. You don't need this part, but I, I like it when it's pulled. Like, hey, you lost. What's wrong with you? And then we can do over here, font.draw. Then we put a text. It Keep in mind, it has to be a string. So if you're, if you're typing like a variable, like ball x, it's not going to work. Because it has to be a string. So you need int str to, start, to turn the integer into a string, but that's not the case. You lose. Actually, let's make it all in caps. Make him feel even worse. There. Or her. Then we have to set our x. So let's go. Let's go four three four hundred, and then our y. Let's also go four hundred. Then our variable for the text for the font, which is text. Can I call it? Text? Yes, I did. Then the color, which is going to be 12, like that. Then, exact same thing for you win. So now, let's see if it works. You lose. It's not, it's not big enough, and it's not in the center. So let's fix one thing at a time. Let's make it 150. Let him have it. Gone. You you lose. There you go. Now it's not in the center, so I gotta move the X. Let's say 200. You lose. Still not in the center, so let's go 100. Come on. Let him have it. There. Right in the center. Yes. So that's definitely off center, and since it's one character less, let's, let's oops, let's make it an extra exclamation mark. So now let's see, 
What happens when you win? I want to win. Come on. You win. Eh, it's in the center enough. So there. So, that's really it for Pong. So, if you, if you wanted to make Pong, well, there you go. You got yourself some Pong. Keep in mind, this is kind of addicting. This game is fun. Because it's Pong. How can you go wrong with Pong? Come on. You, you win. You win. Let's feel that satisfaction. And then when you go back and play once more, and you see you lose, you know you gotta do better next time. You know, oh, I lost. How did I let myself lose to that idiot computer? Try again, basically. So, that's Pong. Hopefully my video wasn't too boring, and hopefully my video was descriptive enough. In the comments, you can leave extra hints to other ways to program Pong that's simpler, or better, or works better. Or, actually, another thing you can comment is how to make the computer follow the ball. If you figure that out, you can leave it in the comments below. Let other people know who watched this video how to do it in case that's what they in that in case that's what they want to do. So, thank you guys for watching. If you like, you can subscribe to my channel. This is Obini Supreme logging off.